Okay. What were you saying about HubSpot? HubSpot has a whole system for sales and marketing playlists, playbooks, and you can divide it up like this is internal, this is external, this is this type of client. Like you can categorize it however you want, and it's all right there, and it's like step by step, and they can actually go through it. Yay. You can trigger workflows. It's phenomenal. Okay. We are live. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Try morning number again. Try number two. Three, four, try five. Try number three, four. <laughs> so this one's awesome. It's called uh, Old Dog Do Tricks. So the cool part about broadcasting live is that you're, you know, any kind of technical difficulty you have literally impacts the show. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, embraced that and we love it and it's just what it is. So thank you for those that did tune in a bit earlier and, um, you know, for your patience as it, hopefully you're coming back on now. So. Uh, this is Aiden Adimi. I'm Janica Morton. I'm Emily Francis. And we actually have this great show today about teaching old dog new tricks. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> it's just sometimes the person's like face just the goes room. a direction sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just Some days it's not the best thing to be the oldest person in the room. You're <laughs> very wise. I am very, very wise. You should listen to me. I'm See, I'm I, don't, I don't get that. I mean, why do you think I work with kids for so long? I crave that, you know, unearned authority over people based on how long I've been alive. So I love that, the unearned authority. I That's used to tell that to my kids because they say, why do I have to respect that person? I'm like, I really don't know because they're older than you. Like, is that really an answer you're supposed to give to someone? I think it's stupid. Well, why do I need to respect the person? I well, can, like, I why? I can be polite. I don't have to, you can't make me your exactly. but I can be polite and courteous. That's yes. a good way but to say I, that. In no way am I obligated to somehow respect, respect you. you just As an because authority. you are blank. I yes. love that. And I so the word is polite. You have to be po you should be polite to elders. We're courteous. Courteous. Yes. By default, I think. To well, anyone. By, to, anyone. to anyone. Age has mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. And I think you okay, hold on you up. may want to adjust the types of behaviors that would be polite That's or right. courteous in one situation for, you know, a person of a certain generation versus a peer. Right. But ultimately that, that level of intentional kindness should be for everybody all the time, no matter yes. what. I oh, agree. I can, I'm, I'm flowcharting this in my mind right now as I'm thinking through sitting down in a bus with peers and then what is the conditions in which you give up your chair? Okay, well for so, me that's more of a physical thing because you could have a 70 year old that's way more fit and healthy than a 20 year old. That's what I was gonna go, like is the condition that or is the condition difficulty in, in standing? And so yes. in case a, a 12 year old comes in with a broken leg, you're like, hey, you know, Yes. So, ah, look at that. Yes. I've always railed against that. You have to respect me because I am your elder. I'm like, bullshit. What did you do to earn that? Because I think polite. The I like, well, I think you're too old to be a giant dick. So what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How have you not learned manners by now? Why is this on me? Yeah. No, no, why cool. do you mean by respect? You're the one being entitled you? right now. So that's really funny you say that because in, in the Middle Eastern culture, that respect for elders is a huge yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I and I remember um, specifically, it was in 2000, and I was in Shiraz. I want to say it was Shiraz. Shiraz or Esfahan, one of those two cities, which are beautiful cities, by the way. And I love Shiraz. Shiraz, uh, it sounds like wine. It hey, is a wine, Shiraz, by the way. Shiraz wine. So, yeah, it is the name of a wine. It's a type of wine. And I remember my sister being something like four or five years old, something really, really young like this. And the older, this older person in the mosque was really upset that she didn't have full covering on. Either mm -hmm. it was her hair or it was something with her shirt or pants. Now, now, you know, he was just really rude about it. And he got me really upset and, and, and I actually just switched to English. Like, <laughs> Because <laughs> at that point, you then I'm just the air there right on out. I can't speak Farsi fast enough or even try to. So, you were okay if she's five or six, you were what in your late teens? Oh, yeah, I was early, yeah, 19, maybe, yeah, something okay. like this. Okay, so I want to say it was in 2000, so I would have been 20, 21 years old. Okay, yeah, actually, I can, I think my birthday was there anywhere, something like that. Yeah, anyways, and it was really frustrating because she's not required to wear a full hijab until she's like 10 or 11, 9, 10, 11 minimum, if, if you were to go from the traditional route. Yeah. So, so more as you're developing out of childhood into like pre No, it's pre definitely adolescence. As, you, as you go through puberty. That's what it means. So become like, a that's, biological adult. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. when that's the, the trigger. full covering parts. And so that makes sense. I mean, if, if it's a 
modesty yeah. based on sexuality thing, then yeah, as puberty happens, then it's a thing. Yes. yes. So what was the purpose of being upset with a child and delivering it in a rude way? Oh, and then what is so the mad. reason to respect you because you're older and yet you're so disrespectful to everybody around you? And that's right. exactly that moment. Yeah. And I thought, and I, I used the word respect in the past, but I think polite, you know, you, we all inherently have a level of politeness that we should have with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole conversation as to what are things that make polite. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. However, um, let's say in the trigger points, probably age is one thing like you're, you're probably in the bringing out all the politeness tools with age, with somebody dealing with someone with age. But what if they start losing, it's easy for that person to lose all those bonus efforts or I don't know what, how to describe mm -hmm. that, right? So, and yeah. I used to say, well, I think older people start with a level of respect and then it's up to them to keep it or they just lose it based on the fact and it's not something that gets maintained just because they have a certain age. Actually, Miles and I, everyone else will kind of disagree on it, but he tries to treat everybody the same, regardless of, I mean, a little child different, but everyone, an adult person the same, regardless if you're 70 or 22. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. It's, you're a person. So he'll speak to people the same way and seemingly doesn't really have an issue. Every once in a while people are like, oh, because he, you know, will swear occasionally when he speaks just It's like a little two year like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? So. But for the most part, there's never really been much of a, like, eh, about him being disrespectful. It's like, I'm treating you like a, an adult person. Like, yeah, you're an adult. You're, I mean, if anything, kind of infanticize or infantilize, I'm the word infantilizing. You want infantilizing. To elderly people into about treating them like, oh, well, I have to make sure I talk a special way. And it's like, they're 92. They probably know about like sex and curse words because they've been alive longer. And I mean, come on, at a certain point, stop treating elderly people like they're babies. That's good. They maybe physically have issues, but mentally, they may mentally have issues, but they're still an adult person. So one of the things that this really has, I'm gonna say triggered in me is the which I have observed over and over again in a lot of families is they say there's adults around a dinner table or around lunch table it's a group of different families or whatever and you have one of the kids whatever age pick an age come up and they have overheard part of the conversation and they start to add to it and you have all these adults go no 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 go sit down be quiet like they're completely disregarded like and it happens over and over and over again I get so mad at that because that, that child whether they're five or fifteen you're basically being shut down and like, one, you don't have a voice yes. that anyone cares about, yes. and two, somehow can't contribute. And it's just like, it makes me so mad. Now, if it's, a, oh, I would say God. the different situations <laughs> if a kid comes up and basically just disrupts the entire conversation, that to me is a, a totally different issue. But if they're wanting to participate, that's, the comes, right? that's yeah. that is absolutely valid. It's like, hey, we're having a conversation about this, basically, don't interrupt your activity and take it over based on whatever. If it's not an emergency, then it's just teaching a boundary. Right. So there's those learning opportunities. Yeah, it's so different. So different. I'm really Thanks. glad that I had the I would be included childhood, not a go play with the kids. I mean, generally I was trying to go play with the kids because I was an only child <laughs> and liked playing with kids. <laughs> well, I think and of when our. When you say play, do you mean like? Like playing Barbies and My Little them, Ponies. I mean. Or making sure they did what you wanted. I lead by example. <laughs> Such a great answer. I mean, to be fair, like thinking about it, like my first best friend that I remember was probably oh. three or four years older than me when we lived in Germany. And we talked about it as adults. He was like, it never really clicked to me. I was so much older than you because you did not seem like a four year old when we hung out as kids. Yeah. So yeah. just thinking about like if I had been continually like shut out of conversations and things like that, I may have not developed a friendship with a kid who was older than me because so, I couldn't keep up. So let's get to the topic. Specifically. That is part of the topic. I know, but let's kind of grind right back into like the neuroplasticity just, part as to what was, what inspired you to say like this is an interesting topic to talk about. Um, Considering you're the kid in the group. Yeah, well, I it came. I mean, it came across my feed just, and I it's like oh, okay, it's fun, and I'm knowing stages of development, learning at all ages, continuing to learn. So, I mean, the, the headline of it is what, like, got to me. And then I read it, like, oh, this is really cool. And as I read it, just, you know, kind of the previous notes, was like, oh, 18, your brain's done growing. Well, that's a crock of shit. Everybody knows that's <laughs> wrong now. Okay, like, 25, we think your brain's done growing. Oh, wait, you go through periodic additional adjustments over time where 
certain skills may wane, other skills yeah. always learning develop. And it kind of made me think, because um, it was one of the things talking about maybe in your like 50s or so, somewhere around that age, there's a kind of another yeah. developmental stage. I wonder if, you know, in the US where a lot of people are retiring around that stage in life, is uh oh, here he is. The one is the, the reason people will suddenly have like a late in life, you know, renaissance of hobbies or something. Is that because now they have free time, or is it because they have free time and the desire and motivation to grow and the, and the skills? And the, their brain is different now, mm -hmm. and the, the types of, of skills that seem to be easier to learn in the older developmental stages are things like reading people. The body language and emotion and things like that where you're now able to kind of mm -hmm. step back from factual stuff and see the world in a different way well to add to that you hit that that mid midlife range of I mean, whatever it is for you but you know let's just say 40 to to 55 you then you've experienced life to an extent you've had lots of failures you've had lots of wins you you're probably not moving into the now i will start having children and be a parent right. figure i'm right. waning slightly out of that right and in addition you've you've learned what you like and what you don't like what you're willing to do and not willing to do and so and you're probably either open to taking risks when it comes to your career because you're at some level where it's like life is too short i'm not going to just settle mm -hmm. or you might have the foundational support to be able to do it mm -hmm. and and so i think it's a whole different time period it's just going through that period of transition and learning so have you ever thought of how much new information is your brain dealing with on a, on a um, on an average day in your world versus let's say noah who is like 16 months old how much new? Yes. So if you really wow. think about it, I, yeah. You know, so you wake up in the same bed, probably mm -hmm. in the same sheets and the same lighting every day, right? And your toothbrush is always in the same spot, and mm -hmm. the water faucet is always the same. And you know, if you really was not at her house, <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds awesome. <laughs> so after you wait to find out. <laughs> What's after that you like? step in the toothpaste on the floor. <laughs> And realize all the toilet paper is now in the bathtub. <laughs> Not anymore. And all your may make is ground into the carpet. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> so that was a phase for a really long time. I think both of you guys are from PTSD. <laughs> oh, for sure. Okay, so. So in my situation, I wake you, up in the same bed with clean sheets. There's no weird shit anywhere unless the dog <laughs> has literally made a weird shit somewhere. <laughs> And you know, little birds guide me to the bathroom <laughs> as I like sing, get ready, and you yes. know, yeah. So it's if you like think about thing. that, and then you probably take the same drive home to the same road or the, or the train, and you know what I'm saying? So if you really were to think about it from a data perspective, how much new information and what new experiences are you having that, that is really getting your mind to explore in a whole different way versus when you go to a city. You've really never seen this stuff every yes. day when you're a yeah, like when we went to Italy, kid. right? Like when we were in Italy, and let's say we're walking anywhere, literally anywhere, it was all brand new, you right. know? Oh, up to the point that I was like, like this in Florence, in this little central area, I was like, I know where I'm at, right? I was still so freaking lost, it's not even funny. I'm like, Janica, we've literally not gone anywhere other than straight. She's like, I don't know where we're at. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I was we, there's so the car, lost. and we walk straight. Anyways, so, so that's the thing that I think is really interesting is that we don't process new information very often if you really, really think about it. Same car, same driving, same routines, same everything. And versus a child. Everything's new all the if time. If they get an opportunity to get exposed to new stuff, like everything is new, new people, new interactions, and then their mind is evolving. So then it's all new again in a yeah. sense. Uh, and new, if you think about it for a child, like new foods, so often in some cases, right? It's like, oh my gosh, especially in this, first one year of eating is like everything all of a sudden becomes new. So I think that's a big part of it too, is that we don't even allow ourselves to explore new stuff yeah. and getting out there. And we're always in the rut of doing the same stuff. And I think if we tweak things a little bit, we also introduce to ourselves the opportunity to now process things differently. Well, and if we practice that of learning new things throughout the day and really being intentional about learning new things, then that helps with our brain growing and not just shrinking and shriveling into so you say intentional and i would like to ask you do you <clears throat> mean habitual 
No, I mean no, intentional. So I intentionally go to learn something new every day. I'll just be Such like. Such as what? Anything, like a new topic. If I, I well, just, how do you intentionally do that? Versus I will go on Google and go through something that's trending, or I'll look on Snapchat or wherever that I don't usually go and try to play and learn. If it's an app of some sort, or I'm online and I find something that's interesting, or I'll look wherever I'm at and it's it's a new book, some subject I don't know about, I'll pick it up. I just did that the other day at the chiropractor's. Like, cool. What book was it? I don't even know, but it was like oh, no. I opened it up. I don't know what the book was about, but the, the section I it's read about was pretty. these huge overblown pictures of like, um, well, <laughs> it started with a sperm and an egg and it went through the whole reproductive cycle, but it was like at the microscopic level. And sure. I'm looking and going, holy shit, I didn't know that that's what that looked like and this looked like. And so then that started me looking and researching and understanding more. Got it. But it's, a, it's an intentional thing of every day and I'll ask myself that in the evening when I'm in bed. That's right. What are your what, questions? What, what did you, I learn today? What did I learn today? And sometimes it's frustrating because I'm like, well, that, you know, I learned something, but it wasn't like, it didn't, it wasn't earth shattering. Yes. And it wasn't inspiring. I like learning new things that inspire me to dig deeper and learn more. See, for me, it's just, I think it's just that curiosity of like, as you guys know, now it's hot and gross and I don't know how much this keep happening, but I go for walks at lunchtime <laughs> and I deliver, honestly, when I drive home too, I'll just like, okay, let me just take this, this mm -hmm. exit and mm -hmm. see what happens. Cause I also yeah. like, I don't like getting lost. So I figure like the more opportunity I give myself to like recognize a thing, I'm like, I'm not lost. I'm just in this part. That's not anywhere close to where I wanted to be, but look, I know where I am. Yeah. But like all the construction stuff they're doing is forcing me to not just take the same loop. Now I'm like, okay, well now they're working on this side. I got to go this way. Oops. This one's closed. So it's. Yeah, it's kind of fun. We work in the arts districts, so, like I need to like walk by the museums and stuff, yeah. and you know, yeah. it's yeah. fun to have the opportunity. If we were in a different environment, it might be like, um, I'm gonna walk inside this locked parking lot because <laughs> I don't want to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I have, been, thankfully, I'm in an environment where I have that freedom and safety to explore for fun. Yeah, these. yeah, um, and. Honestly, for me, I think sometimes it's like the least groundbreaking stuff that ends up being the most useful, i.e. random crap that somehow ends up in a trivia night that I spontaneously sign up for and no one answer because I was a nerd in high school and studied Latin and knew what the root of this word was. And I was like, why do you know that? And I was like, okay, well, it's a long story. So, <laughs> so what, we're, what we're really talking about, it, or one thing that's uh, a, a term for those that are interested in researching this topic is neuroplasticity. And it's your brain's ability, I'm just reading this offline, your brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life. And the study of neuroplasticity and its implications on everything from physical therapy uh, to, I mean, to, to of course the topic of learning itself is just phenomenal. And it's really got people talking in the space. So here's an yeah. example of something really crazy that, that happens in neuroplasticity. So there's a, let me, let me see if I get this right. So there was a gentleman, and I, I think it's beyond him now, that was blind. And so what they did is they created this little pad that would sit on his tongue. And when he looked at, you know, put his head, I guess, obviously looked at something, it would take the the outline of the image and broadcast it on multiple pixels or sensors that were on this little pad that's sitting on his tongue and because the way the tongue was connected to the brain what was happening is that the brain started to say okay i'm going to use those signals to help construct a visual image in the mind so cool and so then he could look he could look through the sensations yeah. that were happening on his tongue mm -hmm. whoa that's amazing. That's insane. So that is what can, neuroplasticity like, is about. Snap or like make a sound. He was basically using echolocate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, a humanized it. version of that. And yes. Some more thing. Just like how to. Because if you get a, like, if you think yeah. about it, your your eyeballs are just to transmit signals to the brain, and then the brain yeah. processes processes it, it. So what if the signal could come from a part of your arm, or in this case, the tongue, and then your brain's like, okay, those particular signals are related to the outside. So I'm going to process those as image. What? Amazing. Yes. 
like really well too could reach for things and touch things based on this this sensation well, that's neuroplasticity and so that really shows you how the brain is just there and it's set like emily was saying at 18 or 25 years old now but you're grow. constantly able to to evolve we can change our mindset just with you cannot can't do just with your day-to-day -day habits and thoughts oh, right that, dude so you can change your cells right mm -hmm. so if through this it, it seems like why would any of us in as we get older feel limited in any capacity whatsoever because we have this opportunity to be do act feel completely different than what we've conditioned ourselves to be so if we're not happy with life right if we're not happy with the way we react to things or the way we're involved with things or the way we experience life we have this this amazing tool in our brain to Do you be think it's because some people are just not they don't enjoy to be mentally challenged from the beginning and so that just takes yep. its toll over time That's versus what people, some that people are like that love yeah. to be mentally challenged and it's it's like they're getting sharper and sharper versus I think it, it's that's a piece of it, but I also think it's the, the whole math loss thing. I think that's a huge thing. Some people just don't have the Explain capacity. It. Explain it. What is math loss? Well, you have math the pyramid. Loss. Maslow's, I always say it wrong. You have the pyramid, and you have the bottom, which is, it is your... Is Maslow's or Maslow's? Maslow. Yeah. Yeah. It's Maslow. I always say Maslow. Um, I mean, it could be it's Maslow, Maslow because... Pavlov, Maslow, because... Yeah. Yeah. I Because I studied them together, and they were are forever jacked up in my brain. <laughs> um, Poor guy. I know. But Maslow, so you have the bottom, which is the the safety, security, your foundational needs, like okay. and food, if you food, shelter, physical, yes. physical safety. Which I have a whole challenge on that, but we don't need to go there. So if if those are not met, then supposedly you can't have the next level, and you can't have the next right. level, and the top level is is um. I'm gonna drop one of the images. What is it? The, the top level self. Uh, self, self, self awareness, self actualization. No, but it's self efficacy. Well, it's all three of those. Self efficacy, self efficacy, self actualization. And yeah. Self so if someone is down there and they don't have a home, say they're living on the street, the theory is that they then would not be able to reach self actualization. It's not that they would not be able to, they're not even wanting to get, re that's not even their concern. They're wanting to eat. That's the theory, yes. I didn't I say they didn't have food, I said they didn't have a house. Or, or, or house, which is still in the psycho physiological need section. Right. Go ahead. But I still challenge that just because I think there are people who they can be living on the street and be working up the pyramid in other ways because in their mind they don't need the, the, that other piece. They're able to really think outside that. It, it's Again, I think it's a mindset. But that's also only a specific part of the population. Yeah, for sure. The Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the theory mostly applies to 80% of the population. The other 20% of the population is scattered between people that are high achievers, and middle achievers, and then the like special like special education, so like autistic kids, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually where we get into 90% of our problems with society is that everything is applied. Everything for the 80 is applied to the all. Right, which is jacked up. So the study that we watched, that I listened to yesterday on happiness, by doctor, so, by, by who was it? What? By Sean Acor. Mm -hmm. So can Talks I address something that. on Maslow's? Mm -hmm. That I saw that was really awesome. It was not like discrete levels. It was gradients. Yeah. And I, I liked like that. seeing that because that made like more that sense better. to me, right? So yeah. the gradient peaks and then it goes down. So those rich It's a person, hill, not a staircase. Exactly. Yes. It's more like yeah. hills and they're like overlapping hills. So physiological needs still need to be met for super Buddhist, successful, rich person, whatever. Well, straight up, if you... But they're not hyper-concerned about it where they're at. Well, they're if you're nutritionally deficit, your brain doesn't work. So, like, at a certain yeah, your point... Your brain might not work. My brain right. Might work. Uh, okay. <laughs> Definitely not. That's fine. So, so, by someone who's never been in that position. Yeah. <laughs> Prolonged <laughs> starvation very much damages your yeah. brain. I.e. anorexia and things like that, just straight up. And anytime you're nutritionally deficit, I mean, you can have, that's, it's just, your body starts eating itself. Okay, so yes, but I'm still gonna challenge that. Look at Life is Beautiful, look at Viktor Frankl, look at the people who were in the concentration camps that were starving to death. And there were, there's quite a few that have written and talk, been talked about and, and interviewed 
who were still able to create beautiful things and use their brains in powerful ways, write poetry, write stories, be, be influencers, you know, really do a lot of things. On the flip side, that exception is that's still also, not the rule. That's yeah. trying to apply a 20% and to also, 80%. Also, that's a very, that was a temporary situation in the span of how that tends to affect people. So when, for the malnutrition affecting brain chemistry, it's usually prolonged. We're talking 15, 20 years of malnutrition. Like you've been homeless for the, the decades. Hi, the Holocaust existed over the course of six years. Right. So there's... And generally even, speaking, you probably, hopefully, God, weren't in... Right, that the spot time. the entire time. But right. even if they were, like, I mean, because that's, that's also happened for, like, kids that grew up in, like, Somalia and stuff, like, in places mm -hmm. that still have terrible conflict, six-ish, six to seven years is usually something that is relatively easily overcome. 15 And maybe 12, also depending on the age that you that's are. That's the range where it starts like actually that. having, like, hardcore effects because it starts at birth and then mm -hmm. comes forward. Yeah, so th there was a thing that I shared today to, to you guys, or Tangie shared it with us yesterday, childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. and how that affects your lifelong health and it talks about that and well i don't know if it does in that video because i watched a whole bunch after i watched that but it talks about how those levels really don't matter the amount of time it depends on the person's mindset it depends on their genetic dna and what's been passed down from their ancestors so you could have someone who has an hour of trauma that lasts a lifetime it could be a where they thought they were starving to death for one day and that is a lifetime so they are so obese because they constantly need food or whatever or you could have someone who had 20 years of it totally fine because in their mind it wasn't the trauma they were able to rework their mind and constantly think through and learn and apply and process differently so yeah it is an outlier thing but all of it is i mean we we can't focus on the the broad range because it's there's no way to learn from all the normal people who aren't normal, by the way. Yes, we yes. don't behave like enough. I, I would please like you to go get your own brain. What? You're sounding like me right now, because you're always like, but everybody, the normal. Maybe I'm just like channeling No, so what brain. you're bringing up though is inherently some people understand these traits from birth and I don't know how or why, mm -hmm. and some have to be taught and or encouraged, or I don't know what was the right word to say Honestly, there. Honestly, I feel like some people just don't freaking have them. Like, yes, yeah, that's there, fine too. Like, there, it's there totally. Are, there are a lot of people that don't have them, and that's what. It, yes, and I mean, a lot of it is the. Well, let's go back. Um, let's go to this example. Well, I was going to say, like, I agree in the general principle that it is possible. Mm -hmm. The the risk that we run, and it's not even the risk that we run. What has happened is that because the edge cases are so inspiring, people right. have then just use that as the only. Yes. This is the reason why hustle culture is so pre prevalently intense. That's like that Regardless article, that was the main part of it. people that 10% of the population really wants to work and live in that mode, that, mm -hmm. mindset, that mode. It is not for everyone and doesn't mm -hmm. need to be for everyone. I yeah. agree. Like like, like how I, I'm wired when it comes to like human interaction, right? My needs for human interaction are super tiny. Right? I am definitely an outlier in that sense. We're very honored but by But you're not going to be like, oh, so because I have a limited need of human interaction and because of that I've done this, this, and this, if you want to do this, you better cut all the people out of your life. Exactly. Like, and I've seen a lot of people give that type of advice. Like, I'm never going to prescribe the way that I want to function to someone else and say, this is how you should be. Right. But there's a lot of shooting and judging going on in what you were saying uh, and implying. Right. right. And that's a no-no anyways. I mean, it is, but like, it just gets changed into a different sense. But wouldn't it be better say, to like, say, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You say, the hustle culture, can you explain what the hustle culture is in your opinion? Basically, work, work, work 24-7, always be working. And if you, if there is a space that can be filled, it should be filled with some type of work. Right. And a lot of, a lot of it comes from the fact that um, because, especially for first world countries, are the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in general has a broader distribution so more people have access to it there is a lot more free time i mean the more we get convenience machines and automation sure. everything else we get more free time so a lot my of robot servants have changed my life right so a lot of people are talk saying well it's hard for me to succeed you know at whatever i want to do and there is a, there is a place where a lot of it is the effort has not been applied mm -hmm. to really validate whether or not you 
can and cannot or succeed. Or apply correctly. It's like you may be hustling, but you are two degrees off, and that is right. why you can't you can be, get where it, you want. Like with running, like you can run really fast or you can run efficiently. And most of the time, if you're going to be doing distance, like marathon and stuff, you're running efficiently and you're running fast. Okay. And there's, I've seen, you, know, you see this on KHR all the time. There's people that are running out there, getting their exercise in, and their form is so bad that like they are burning 50% of their energy in the same space that someone that knows the I just pick her Phoebe. Well, yeah, they'll, they'll be able to move twice, as, twice the distance. Right? You're just moving all the parts of their body, not the ones they but need to run. The, the issue inside of the prescription of hustle to all problems becomes that everyone looks past where, like, what people are set up for. Like, they don't do the assessment part. They just say, well, the reason you're not succeeding is because you're not working hard. Oh, if you can't work hard, this doesn't work for you, then you need to change your mindset. And it's like, while all of that could be true, that should not be their go-to must, prescription must be true. for it. Yes, exactly. But is, yeah, and I was about to say, isn't isn't that just such poor diagnostics? No, it's a bunch of unlicensed therapists running around that shouldn't be diagnosing anybody. That's what I said. Yeah, oh, yes. You said it better than I did. But yes, it's just poor diag. Because to say, like, you come in and you say, "Man, my stomach hurts." No, 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 no. Um, You're just not thinking about it correctly. My doctor said that I have this issue with my heart. And all of a sudden, everybody starts dumping on you stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have been running, and I told you you should have done this, and you should have done that, and why are you not doing this? And without asking, without understanding, yeah. you could have been like, hey, motherfucker, was a con congenital birth defect. Right, and that's just And it's the same thing that I'm keep on talking about. Like, yeah. oh, I, I didn't know you had that at birth, because you don't ask. Right. So the hustle culture, if, if said in a bad way, could imply that, the way you said it, but that is judging someone's whole, uh, where they're at and where they're wanting to get to and only saying that the only solution is this. Right. The only solution to getting to Mars is digging faster. Like, <laughs> it really work like that. And, and you know, so, so right, like, well, if you have the right mindset, too. huh? <laughs> there's also cognitive, you could create it. right? So, it's just very yeah. complex, it's very complex. And I think any, and this is kind of I actually honestly been one of my problems or a difficulty for me in the space is that I, I know a lot of things, and I'll be able to give a quick answer on a lot of things, and I know a lot of other things that I'm like, I can't even give a quick answer on. The answer is so much more complex. Hey, should I invest in stocks? I don't know. Like right. in an isolated answer, sure, it's it's a great part of your portfolio. Right, right. But it's but if it's like I, I meant instead of paying for food for my kids, oh shit, I didn't know that. Right, that's a whole. So I should ask you a ton of questions. What is your goals and why are you here? But I would say one thing about the hustle culture. Uh, some people really clown on on Gary Vee for talking this, and I don't think they listen and actually understand what he is saying, and what is being taught by him and specifically, right. or even by myself, if I even uh, go to, into that mode, which is, which is essentially this, if you, what you want out of life is so different than where you are now, the difference between where you are and where you want to be needs input of something. It needs input of energy, prayer, positive mindset, whatever it may be. But that is completely up to the person as to what they want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So. Meaning to say, with enough education and time and money, I could become a neurosurgeon. I cannot do that from sitting here. Right, right. I have to be able to get out of this box and move on to that world. And that is going to require anatomy study and this and that and all those things. That is just what's going to have to happen. But if I also want to be a good dad, right. then I'm going to have to cut out the things that relate to maybe watching TV or going to play football or whatever. And I have to just make decisions. But it's all predicated on what I wanted to do, which is I started off by saying, I want to be a surgeon. So and, and this is what happened. And Gary Vee, and I remember, let me finish this one. Yeah. Gary Vee had this video and the guy stands up and he says, you know, I got this good job. I like taking vacations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really, you know, what you say doesn't really resonate with me. He's like, no, that's fucking amazing. Like, I'm not telling you to go and do anything different. I am just saying, for those people in the room that want to have a billion dollar company or want to own the jets like he does or want to be multimillionaires and right now you can't afford to get out of your mom's house, you're going to have to work. 
And that's all predicated on what you want to do because I'm telling you that it requires you to dig in and, and get going. And, all and I don't understand really what has, what is he saying that is bad? It's not so much, it's not so much that what he's saying is bad. It's the broader context of people that don't understand why. And Gary sometimes, you know, because there's snippets of things, he gets taken out of context in a lot of cases. Um, but it's the it's it's the telephone game that happens inside of all of this mm -hmm. the, the culture of coaching, okay? Which is people without experiences enacting the things that they preach are giving people prescriptions on life for stuff that they have never achieved. Stop right there. Now, like, can we can we cut that? Where are we at on the video? Let's put that out there because that is exactly actually a huge issue. I have issue. no way of telling that based on anything I have really? on these screens. We should be able to figure that out. Yeah. We need to do that. Really, we can. Yeah, we, we we can figure it out. But it's the it, it really. I'm is not the, willing to turn the stream off on accident and trying to figure yeah, it that out. That really is the case, though. A lot of the um, a lot of the Just issues ask to look for it. that people are having with that is that they go out and they say, okay, if this is what you're supposed to do, they put it into practice and they hit snag, and they go back to the same people that prescribed this thing, and they're like, okay, so what do we do in this situation? That person says, we'll just do more of X, which is the first thing that they got sold. And it's like, okay, if you haven't tried it most of the other ways, like, and it goes back to the whole like teacher apprentice thing that happened before the internet and everything else. You basically didn't teach something unless you did it as a profession. So if you don't know five routes to get to this place, right. maybe don't give directions because you don't know if there's a detour today or whatever. And then like, oh, well, it didn't right. work the right. way I did it, so there's something so wrong with you. in Gary's context, a lot of what he talks about specifically relates to attention and using the internet as a tool and being able to build audiences, right? Mm -hmm. Because that is the core of everything that he's done for mm -hmm. most of his life. And so he keeps speaking on that specific thing. And people the, try to apply it to right. a bunch of other stuff. The farther he gets away from the farther he gets away from the place where he's like grinding on a specific piece, the farther the, the less people hear that first part. Like I did X and so be, the way that I did X was this way. If you want to repeat that, here's the steps that you would apply to repeat that. So, like, you still don't hear him talking about how jets, how the jets should be run, right? You right. You don't hear him talking I, about I, how an NFL team, right? Like, well, I'm saying like in his public speeches, right? He's not talking about like this is how these people should be running this, you know, massive football organization, because at this point he doesn't have experience inside of the football organization. In specific areas of the football organization's activities, he might be able to speak on that because he has run multiple businesses. But he's not going to speak from an owner's perspective, mm -hmm. right? And or a that, coach's perspective, or any level is, of other things. That is the that is one of the key things to evaluate anybody on is if you're speaking from a prescriptive standpoint on what someone else should do to get to a certain point, and you haven't done it, then you've got to say, okay, why, right? Because there's Even other if you ways of phrase it is about like. I've studied, I have not personally done it, but I've studied all these things. I've found a common thread is this. I see maybe yes. success is by combining these and common that's, threads. That's like a journalistic approach or yeah. a, historic, uh, a historic perspective where you're saying, yes, this is what I've observed. Based on somebody people. else's data that they've accumulated. Right, right. X is my theory. But most people, and, and it goes again, actually going back to something Gary says, goes putting in the work, right? If you don't have the experience because you put in the work to get the experience, then you need to put in the work to get the study. And if you don't get the study, and especially if you don't get the study and can't translate it to multiple people, like multiple types of people and mindsets, it's just gonna come up flat every single time. And people are gonna be like, okay, I hear you, but I don't give a shit. That's. And so what they're, what they're thinking is they need to hustle more and tell more people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's essentially, I don't which, know. which does, you know, in, in a certain case does work. It's just that they're, what they want to find at that point, and they probably don't know it yet, they're looking for the greater fool. They're looking for the person that will take advice sight unseen and not give a crap about verifying any of it because it's a very quick, easy pathway. Or it somehow, it'll justify something that they already want to think is true. Yeah. You know what? Let's talk about the hustle culture in a different story, mm -hmm. different paradise, because one of them is the work one, and that's allergic reaction for a lot of people. So we'll move that this one to weightlifting. So one idea would be, you know, you need to sleep eight hours and eat for an hour and a half. And so for the rest of that time, you should be in the gym working out because that's obviously right. That's hustling in the workout world. If you're trying, if you're trying but, to, yeah, yeah. That, that wouldn't make sense, right? 
So you watch Emily, you, I, you, I see the word Emily here. You watch, uh, uh, there's a documentary on Ronnie Coleman mm -hmm. on Netflix. It's just crazy because he's right here in Arlington, by the way. So I, they show his house like a hundred times. Like I bet you could just go figure out where he's and knock on the door because he seems like the coolest dude you'd ever, like the most humble, chill dude you'd ever met. Uh, so Ronnie Coleman is, was a former like Mr. Universe, I think eight time winner or something like yeah, this. Yeah. a massive amount of wins. And he worked out one hour a day. One, watch the documentary. It's yeah. nuts. He's like, I had to because I was a dad, and I had the. Uh, well, no, no, no. At that time, he wasn't. No, he was like, I was a police officer. Like, I had a job, <laughs> and so I could <laughs> like, I came and worked out. And then I had to go to my job, you know. So he worked. So he worked out one hour a day, and he did that in what type of time frame? Because you know, like, and him being a police officer, also being an athlete before that. He was building on years of the one to two hours a day. Yeah, but he wasn't doing yeah one or two hours a day in any thing. It's amazing. Right. But I don't think you could do one to two hours a day on a business and become the best business in the world or win a win a entrepreneur of the year award or anything. You can if you apply to, if you do that for five years. One hour a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It depends on the team, the length of the it's, time. It's, so the team. Iron triangle. Time, price, or uh, speed. You apply you get two of those, you don't get the third. So if you do have, if you only got an hour a day, but you're going to, you know, do a high quality one hour a day, then you just apply 10 years to it and yeah, you build a business. So here we have a question from Mr. Joseph. Good morning. It says, uh, is part of the hustle culture to figure it out as you go? Because mm -hmm. hustling in the way I see it, sometimes is sometimes used, sorry. Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a monitor. It's not take, about taking the time to research every single thing. Usually it's a matter of just getting out there and doing it and doing what needs to be done to figure out on the way. So that yeah, is, that is a, that's a very interesting question. That is, that is more of a, that's a, that's an amalgamation of two different ideas, right? So one is the, um, there, so there's the hustle Can culture. Google alchemation and text me the difference. Alchemation? Amalgamation. Amalgamation. Oh. Say it again, say it right. I mean, it means I things. Because, yeah. like, I... But... Just haven't heard that outside of, like, <laughs> dental work. People are going, it's, it's the... It's not to do a so combination. It's the action it. process or result of combining or uniting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an amalgam that's used in dental work, and it's a combination of mercury mm -hmm. and other crazy shit, which right. I don't know why we're putting mercury in about separate conversation. Okay. So, I so basically, like the, it's the idea of, like, you have to research and... and you have to do research on new concepts and ideas, and then he will layer that with, you know, the hustle aspect of like you should spend every waking moment to get to the place that you want to be, and then on top of that, it really a lot of that then gets layered into the tech space, which used to be about figuring out new ways of using stuff that had that is newly invented or has is lightly understood, but nowadays most of what people do is iterative on top of already defined slash um, creative processes. So it's not really as necessary for people to basically jump off a cliff and build a plane on the way down. In certain cases, that is the case, but then going back to the triangle, there's a lot of time that needs to be applied there, and most people think they can short cut the time by just like running themselves ragged. If I just do everything really fast, somehow I'll magically get to a, an end point where you're just, when, yeah. when you're Phoebe running, you so, use I mean, a lot of energy, you've we, been hustling, but you're not actually getting to where you want any faster than you would if you just like took a second yep. and had a plan to follow. Like I get and then question, hustle that plan. I get that question all the time when it comes to um, the like the Plymouth like market like, perspectives. And people are like, Well, where's your customer today? And we're like, We're th that doesn't exist. Like the customer we want, the ideal customer for us, the customer we're driving toward, doesn't exist today. We're doing other activities that build up to that customer, but it's a five-year perspective. And that is that is crazy to a lot of people because either they've worked in businesses that are already established and they're just going and finding a slice of a built market, or they have a misconception of how long it actually takes to build most things that become worth anything, right? If you look at any headline for most companies that have that raised X amount of money, either the founders and the team have been working on it for probably 10 years, or the company was around for 10 years, and then they started making headlines. Linear Labs is a perfect example. Eight years worth of research on building out the motors and putting together the pieces, and you know, also building on top of Brad's experience with Ustream and like his business network and everything else. All of that comes together to last year, there's a press release that says four and a half million dollars raised. 
right? But people are like, oh my God, I heard about this company last year, now they're raising four and a half million dollars. And like they, it doesn't click that like all of this other work goes into that. But you know what? There's Becoming so aware of something does not mean that is where that thing began. Yeah, but you know what? There's so many stories of that. And people say, yeah, yeah, but that's different. That's Brad's story, you know? But that's more, that's more. Or that's different, Abe. That's your story. And so, you know what? I, I, you know, I don't think I need to, what well, you're saying, I got to work hard. Like, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Like, you're just telling me to work all the time. And, you know, and so. Yuck. Which is fine. They but, but, go follow but, but there's a lot of negative, <laughs> there's a lot of connotations about that. Yeah, yeah. So I just got a text message that asked me for help to, to work on a deck for presenting to a company uh, on Tuesday. Okay. This is Memorial Day weekend. I'm so excited to be doing that. I'm not looking at it as, as hustle culture. I'm working. I am like so pumped and grateful Is that something that I've got yeah. and put whatever has happened, the stars aligned, the universe gave it to me, I was born into it, brown power, I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> Brown privilege, whatever the fuck it is, right. that that's what I can do this weekend is work on a thing for a, a, a car company brand that's just mind blowing. Right. Right. So I could also say I'm sorry. From 5 p.m. till 9 a.m. Tuesday morning is Memorial Day week. 5 p.m. Friday to my night, it's Memorial Day weekend, and I believe in the work-life balance and connecting with my soul and dealing with my family, and that's awesome. Right. For the person who's doing that, that's awesome. This person wants the other person to should do these. And this person is saying you should do these, and they're gonna just always conflict with each other. Right, which is why most people need to just. Because I think you're just gonna decide what camp you wanna be in, they need and the then you're not gonna be affected by it. Yeah. Why does it have to be a camp? Why can't it just let everyone do whatever That's what I'm saying, just decide what you wanna do, do, but don't enjoy. judge the other person. So if someone's yeah. like, no, man, I just wanna chill a weekend, like, cool, cool. Not, cool. oh, they're lazy and they're not yeah. committed. It's like, but, but, but no. at the end, But at the end of the day, why I'm do committed we to something different so than your goal much is. about what somebody else is saying about us that it ruins our ability to do what we want to do? Because most people are programmed. Yes. I mean, that is just And crazy. then you have the outside influences and, and forces. So, like, I love to work. Work for me so is not work. It's that, fun. I was going to get to that. Like, but some work is not. I don't want to spend the weekend cleaning my house, and that's work. Right, 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 right. So, you have 78 kids for that. So, I don't understand yeah. that part, to be that's, very, very that's honest. That's why I had them. I've never understood it. To, you know, if I wanted to be a pro football player, I would go ask those people, and I would do what they say, and I would. And it's hard, it's hard work. Right. Right. It's hard work, and there's talent. Right, right. And it's hard work though, and and I can't say no, man. You know, why are you always tell me I don't I work out and watch what I eat and 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 what is well, that? It's like it's well, the it's Hulk like, Hogan. Dude, you like, asked to do that. The Hulk Hogan fantasy yes. of eat your vitamins and drink your milk and say your prayers, and you too will be a steroid ridden, massive <laughs> tan person in your underwear. Well, you left out the part where you actually got to that point, which yeah. was sweat, steroids, and tr painful, horrible injuries, and. Addiction Lots of issues exercise. because you need pain medicine because you have destroyed so, your body. Like that's the fantasy yeah. part that gets shoved in the back because nobody would ever sign up mm -hmm. if they knew what it actually took to do something. So there's definitely there's definitely a piece where there are there are people that are not exactly honest with where they want to be and the influences that they have to mm -hmm. maintain, right? So you say influences they have to maintain. What do you mean by influences? So. I was the influences outbound or something coming from external. External. So external, but external relationships create influence, right? So okay. if you're married to someone who is completely the like against the entirety of working on a startup or a business sure. and all they mm -hmm. want is like safety and security, that's mm -hmm. gonna be a big external influence on the way that you are that you can work and maintain that relationship. Yes. Sure. Right. Hundred percent. And so Absolutely. And it's the same thing. It's like, you know, with family and with friends and the other stuff, like depending on how closely you tie the exter your external relationships and influence to what you're actually going to do in life, you are on a spectrum of control for yourself. For yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? So most people are, yeah. most people are by default, society kind of sets it up where 50% of their life is actually controlled externally. Right. And then 50% is internal. And that's in a relatively balanced kind of setting. I would say most people are probably closer to 75, 25. Okay. And so there's this this internal fight that gets expressed through what you were talking about with people, you know, prescribing either work life balance going to other people or being mad that some other, other people have told them like to get to this place you gotta work harder, where they do not understand what the relationship to control that they have over themselves versus what is being externally exerted on them mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And so it does look weird to someone, like if someone has always lived in a 75% externally motivated 
controlled, influence type situation. And they think that's just how it is because that's how everyone else is around them. Right. It looks weird when they see someone like me and they're like, well, aren't you going to do X because that's what people do? And I'm like, I don't care. That's not what I want to do. Right. Right. Like, literally. It's really, it's really fascinating. This whole topic is fascinating because people will discredit or, or try to push things on you. Yeah. yeah. Then hold a second. Then all of a sudden one day they're going to be looking and, and, and Forbes are like, you know, billionaire Stephen Ellis is telling people to do, oh, that doesn't apply to me. You know what? He, uh, he must have had white family and grew up rich and went to Ivy League school. So whatever he's saying doesn't apply to me. So no matter where you are in the paradigm, someone is going to discredit what you say. Right. Either you don't know what you're talking about. But or, then, oh, you're not like me. You don't understand yeah. where I come from. You don't understand human psychology. You don't get this. You don't understand what it's like to have a kid or a wife or yes. whatever, whatever. Yes. You need to it's check so your internalized misogyny, just, which is what it, I was told I mean, the other day on the internet. I don't know. It's, uh, so I quit. I, I really quit on this subject, you know, because I mean, those that want to. You have to leave people where they want to be, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's something. If, and, and it really is related to their and my mm -hmm. judgment on somebody else's story. Yes. So I like to remove mm -hmm. myself from those moments as much as possible. So when I get on those threads that are like, oh, hustle culture, and I'm like, cool, that's where you're at. I'm over here, and I'm going to do my own thing. Right. And I'm going to source the information from the people that I believe in that are that's helping me advance. And if that's not liked by some people, then that is just what it is. I can't get into, the, into helping them out there. I just can't. And because then you're constantly... Right. Arguing and debating people and just, just people living a life. Yeah, because yeah. it's ridiculous. And and a lot of times, in some cases, people are. Hey, you got you got a you got a fan over there on Facebook, bro. You you met Lightning. Lightning's coming. He's he's coming to the office next time he's in town. We should have him on the show. Um, oh yeah, I, I, yeah. So the um, what was I going to say? So a lot of times, it's the there's an internal fight that's happening that's been extra, expressed externally. So well, that's exactly what it is, and I know that's what it is. And, and it's, it's really interesting because, like, <laughs> that's why they can't. That's why that, that, that's why you can't actually have that conversation because it's actually there. Right. And you're so dealing with out here, but it's really in here. So how would you have that conversation with? I mean, you're talking in the in the in, in the, the broad sense. In the yeah. broad sense, how would you have that conversation? It's not a conversation. So it is. Most a conversation is when so these become debates. No, I don't, I've well, never okay, a long no, time ago no, to get out of no, the no, 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 no. She's talking about the initial time where you're, you're talking about the topic, not something you're But that's not necessarily a conversation. But, it, but it, why can't it be? Why can't we start, start setting those expectations and agreements with people of, this is how I am, how are you, how do we work together? How do we let each other be the best that we can be? Support each other where you're at. Like what? What? Yeah. Like you're a morning person. I'm a night person. Okay, blah blah. You have blah. to decide how much you care about interacting with that person, and is it worth it? Honestly. So, and a lot of that yeah. is determined by proximity, right? So, right. I care much more about having difficult conversations about like differences in opinion with Christy than I care about anybody else that I run across. Right. So people can come and ask me for something, and usually I give them advice specific to the thing that they're asking and I'll ask a clarifying question to kind of figure out where they're at yeah. right but I do not care about the change that they may possibly experience if they take the advice right it is on them to do it right versus if I live with you I might care a lot <laughs> more it's going to impact you exactly <laughs> so I think of if and, you're and it's someone of getting a puppy I should be invested in this conversation because my yes. shit's about to get eaten exactly yes. exactly every evening one or two or four of my children want to cuddle and watch a movie with me or watch TV. I love cuddling, spending time with my kids. I, watching TV is the bane of my existence. I think it is the biggest waste of time. I don't want to watch TV. I don't, I just don't. So I will cuddle with them and read an article on my phone or work or do some sort of craft or something. But in their mind, you're, I'm not, you're not, you're not present. You're not, I'm not present. Yeah. I'm not, I'm working. I'm not doing anything, I'm not relaxing with them. And I'm like, okay, if I sit here and watch this show, I'm going to fall asleep but, or but I'm going to be your frustrated. How do you transfer that understanding in a conversation with someone, you know, like, like he okay. was saying? So it's... Can I have a, give you my opinion? Of course you can. Yeah, because that's a, one like sided, can you. that's a one-sided <laughs> moment right there because they're not looking for, can we get to a situation where we do something you, we both like, mother? And you, was, you would list out 10 things, and they list out 10 things, and the one that's a common, 
you'd be like, awesome, that's the one we'll do. And then their point is valid. True. So you said, mom, you like crocheting, I'm crocheting, we're crocheting together, and you're still now Doing talking any- on the phone. But we said we would do this together. But that's, what they're yeah, saying totally is that I want to watch yeah. TV and I want you to play with my hair. And you're like, but I don't want to watch TV. But really, the point is, I want to watch TV, but with you near me as mm-hmm. a byproduct mm-hmm. or as an accessory. Yeah. So you really have to have the conversation like, I'm totally cool to do something with you, dedicated to you, tied. But we have to come in alignment with that is because you could flip it around and say, you know, we're going to do, we're going to read documents together and they're not going to do it. And then they'll be upset. And you're like, and, and I think those are those moments of providing yeah. that contrast. It goes back to being polite and goes back to being respectful, which is treat them exactly how you would treat an adult in this case. And you could say, well, we would have to have an alignment, an agreement on what we would do together. We don't just do what you want to do and be upset at me. Right. So Miles and I have that issue because there's plenty of, we we like to watch TV and movies and stuff, pop culture. So there's plenty of stuff we enjoy watching together where we are both engaged in it. We like to talk about it before, during, and after. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's a common thing we're doing. But then there's other times where it's just like, we're just watching a movie. It's like it's a movie we've seen before. It's one that like, oh, I like it, but I'm not emotionally invested in it. I don't need to watch it to know what's happening because I've seen it 50 times. So I'll be puzzling around on my phone, and he's just like, no, I thought we were watching this movie. And it's just like, at this point, the TV's just on. So <laughs> What is the problem? <laughs> so but, yeah, yeah, it's just that, that in having to explain to him, it's like, yeah. this isn't an engaged activity we're doing together. This is just the TV being on while we're in the same room together. Yeah. That's not a connection. We could either pick something it's like, or just pick up. I'm just not in the fucking mood to like make my night be about watching TV. You so, said like, yeah. I think you remember, I remember you saying like, and so we decided we have to have specific yeah. like, date time. We want to watch this show. We're very excited to watch this show. We were, can't wait for it. It's great. Or we'll go to the grocery store. We'll take the dogs for a walk. We'll go garage sailing or pick a thing. We'll go do some activity, even if it's in the home, but we're gonna clean the garage. Usually it results in arguing and fighting because everything mm-hmm. is precious to Miles and I'm like, trash it all, burn it to the ground, let's start <laughs> over. Because that part of me that was a kid that moved every three years is like, everything is garbage. Right. I don't want to pack bad. it in a box. Yeah. So, so we just had uh, a comment uh, where we talked for, on this whole thing that from Joseph said, it seems to imply that being selfless is not worthwhile. Mm. My response to that is unbalanced selflessness is, is not okay. Well, if and other people also comes with, trying I'm, to guilt you into being selfless when really it's like you are you just want something and you're going to make me right. feel bad for not wanting it to. Right. I like this lesson because it's it's the it's the it's the concept of martyrdom versus uh, offering. Like uh, I offer my selflessness to people. I am not going to allow you to take it from me. Right, and even and that's in, in the so case let me of ask you that, relationships. Let me ask you that in reference to what I was about to say, which is, um, there's if you watch Abraham Hicks, talks sometimes around selflessness, and it's mm-hmm. like, of course you should be selfish, and you know it, that's such an I have such a logic reaction to that word and that term because. You know the way I was raised, and yeah, cultural get, things like cultural no, no, you need stuff. to be about the community, not yourself, versus right. like right. And so the community would be the first one to like burn me as being a witch if I don't toe the line. So let me just kind of <laughs> go for number one. <laughs> so, so, so I float, motherfucker. I float. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and so it's like why, why would why would you want to come to this existence and then spend your time making other people happy and doing things that you don't want to do and doing things yeah. that are don't bring you joy like why would you ever think that that was okay so hold on because you, you will have to do that i also do think so some people kind of get off on being a martyr by being selfless yeah, there's that too but that's that's their joy is go for it that's the thing that that. and that's what fuels yeah, it yeah you should yeah. reduce that to a smaller subset of your existence yeah. it shouldn't be a majority of your existence and you know a lot of religions teach that so people get programmed with this idea that they're always supposed to be giving and it's like no you should qualify why you're giving and if it is worth it and that's Setting based those on boundaries. what makes you happy anyway. Yeah. So, quote unquote, selflessness in this case is actually selfish. Yeah. Yes. And I because used to say that to my dad, and I think he finally caught it. He, you know, and I finally said, Dad, but the vast majority of this stuff to me is uh, motivators of people is around uh, money and power mm-hmm. or influence, you know, which, you know, and then you got what does money really mean and what does power really mean? Right. 
And there's so many different, there are blanket terms for these different things, influences, one, whatever. So in the process of being selfless, are you really truly being selfless and just giving and walking off and in the middle of the night, nobody knows you went and gave that donation? Or are you doing it to an actually impart influence, either in the form of political power, admiration, mm -hmm. respect? Are you giving a gift of love? Or are you giving a gift of control or guilt? There's so much into that. And so ultimately what I ended up telling that my, I was sharing with my dad is like, I think all of those things is all the same, which is all around fulfilling their own personal need anyways. Yeah. That's all it is. And if you always keep that in mind, like whatever we're doing is fulfilling ourselves anyways, we're all running off that equation. What's in it for me? Then it's so honest. And people are always in that mode no matter what, regardless of whether or not they say that. Like in, the, in the concept of spending time with someone, like with your significant other, if you tell your significant other, I want to spend time with you, and that is all you care about, then whatever they suggest, however they want to put that context mm -hmm. and frame around it is okay. But if you say, I really want to do this with you, and you put it in the context of, I want to spend time with you, but only if we do X, now you're just serving yourself. That's right. I wanted to watch TV, and you don't usually let me watch TV on this night, so if I say we're going to do it together, uh, yep. yep. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. I want so to watch that note, ask you to watch Deadpool because she wants to cuddle. And, you know, so on that, <laughs> note, on that note, in the hustle yeah. culture, we're going to have to sign off because i got to hustle, hustle, hustle for the next four days so I can present this, Yay. help uh, help our team win a world, <laughs> world leading brand in the automotive space. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So, so I'm going to hustle, hustle, hustle for those that are hustling over the weekend. Reach out. Uh, we're on Discord. We'll drop in our link here in a second. Uh, so we chat on Discord, of course, you know, we're on Instagram, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, right. Twitter, Snapchat. And we won't we're be streaming on, on Monday because we are out of the office we won't be in for the office Memorial on Monday. Day. That's so right. we will be back on Tuesday. And I may not be here on Tuesday, about. by the way. I don't, I don't think I'll be here on Tuesday, personally. So but whoever's for here guys that are looking for a great show, tune in on Wednesday. I'll be back. <laughs> Whatever. And right. then Emily just deleted the document on how to do a stream and started working from home. The end. <laughs> <laughs> That's very selfish of you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, if I'm not needed, See I don't want to burn you Bye, guys from Mars. Uh, Bye. Janica Morton. Emily Francis. Stephen Ellis. Bye.